actually, it, it fits in a way with our um, with what we wanted to talk about next, which is the passing of American hero Mike Ravel, who certainly was willing to go against the grain and push power and do things that were very uncomfortable for his own side. It's like going into the Senate. You know, the first time you get there, you're all excited. My God, how did I ever get here? Then about six months later, you say, how the hell did the rest of them get here? <laughs> you know, and, and I got to tell you, after standing up with them, some of these people frighten me. They frighten me. When, when you have mainline candidates that turn around and say that there's nothing off the table with respect to Iran, that's code for using nukes, nuclear devices. I got to tell you, I'm president of the United States. There will be no preemptive wars with nuclear devices. To my mind, it's immoral, and it's been immoral for the last 50 years as part of American foreign policy. Let's use a little moderator discretion here. Senator Gravel, that's a weighty charge. Who on this stage exactly tonight uh, uh, worries you uh, so much? Well, I would say the top tier ones. The top tier ones. They um, made statements. Oh, Joe, I'll include you too. You have a certain arrogance. You wanna, you wanna tell the Iraqis how to run their country. I gotta tell you, we should just play get out. Just play get out. It's their country. They're asking us to leave, and we insist on staying there. And why not get out? What harm is it gonna do? Oh, the, you hear the statement. Well, my God, the soldiers will have died in vain. The entire deaths of Vietnam died in vain. And they're dying in vain right this very second. You know what's worse than a soldier dying in vain is more soldiers dying in vain. That's what. Little taste there of the total passionate moral clarity that Senator Mike Gravel had. Didn't care who he made uncomfortable. Didn't care whether it, you know, went Calling against Joe Biden. The yeah. Estalia, he called out Joe Biden um, as well in those debates. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama. Gave it to totally him. fearless. And by the way, Sagar, um, it's 50 years ago today that Mike Gravel read the Pentagon Papers. Wow, on the Senate floor. Into the congressional record. Um, it, the Nixon administration had tried to blog. There was a Supreme Court case. New York Times was moving forward with publishing some of these memos. I mean, this was really uh, a look at exactly what normally gets hidden from the public of how these incredibly significant war-making decisions were made, one of the things that was revealed is basically like there was no debate effectively within the administration over like, well, should we even be doing this? It was uh -huh. just a total assumption that, of course, we have to be there. Of course, we have to spend all these lives and this treasure um, out of this, you know, foolish hypothesis about the domino effect and how ultimately communism would sweep through on Asia and then to Europe and it'd be the end of the world. So um, an absolutely fearless iconoclast. I was a little bit pissed off about the way that, I don't know if you read any of the mainstream obituaries, no, but didn't. they all painted him as like this weirdo, crank. gadfly, crank, etc. And that's the danger of if you dare to go up and challenge Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and the powers that be within the Democratic Party, then even to your dying day, they will smear and dismiss and try to marginalize you as a kook. No, it's very sad. He did a heroic thing with the Pentagon Papers. And you're right. I mean, you know, I interviewed him. I think I think we both interviewed we did, him yeah. twice um, yeah. while he was around. He was just so fun to talk to. He was a hilarious guy, too, um, in terms of getting into contact with him and, and seeing exactly. He had, he, some, just, he had some real thoughts about Pete Buttigieg. Yeah, he left that. it all out on the table, <laughs> Pete Buttigieg. He, I believe he said, he's like, I just think he's young and he's gay. He got himself in trouble for that one. <laughs> I know the Gravel kids were very mad at him. But look, that's who he was. He said it exactly how it was. And he called out everybody. He was somebody who it was a real joy um, in order to talk to. And I think those kids actually deserve a legacy, as well as that documentary. We had the documentarian on, on Rising. Yeah. I forget his name, um, but American Gadfly. And I know that everybody, you can go watch that right now if you want to learn a little bit more about him. So it's a fascinating thing to see. I think, how old was he? Like 92? 91, I think. 91. Mm -hmm. 91 years old and still able to have an impact on American politics so many That's years later. Incredible so, thing. And inspire an entire generation. Yeah, he was age 91. Yeah. Um, died at home with his family. I feel like you, incredibly lucky 
to have gotten to spoke with, yeah. speak with him right. while he was still here. And I mean, he was very he was very sharp and cogent mm-hmm. in our interview. Oh, absolutely. This in was our, like a year ago. Too, yeah, right? in Not our interview with him. And I, I absolutely agree with you. The fact that you now have the Gravel Institute mm-hmm. carrying on his fearless legacy, um, that you had you know, a younger generation who really learned about just how much courage this took and how significant this act was in American history is a profound service. So um, rest in power, Mike Gravel, you will absolutely be missed for legendary moments like the one that we just played you. Yeah, that's right. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.